There has been some interesting developments since Jensen gave his GTC keynote and one leak in particular that looks to set the performance bar for Big Navi. What is that performance level Big Navi will need to beat? Let's get into it. We have seen many leaks in the past few weeks. For all of us geeks looking for that performance level that keeps that GPU crown, we have seen some pics of unusual GPU cooler designs and even a leak on a new Asus ROG Strix 3080 Ti with three fans. And while I find them mildly interesting, the more curious information is from two additional leaks. Since my last video, it appears the 3080 has been promoted to be on the GA102 die. That moves it upscale and enables it to have more shaders than a 80 series has ever had and on the same die as a 3080 Ti. That hasn't happened since Big Kepler or the GTX 780. This is exciting news since it seems Nvidia has reacted to the news of RDNA 2 and rumors of Big Navi. The three SKUs on the GA102 now seems pretty certain. From the tweet by Kat Corgi, whose nickname is Kitty Corgi, of which I discussed in my previous video, the naming on the high end may still be in discussion. However, a full fat GA102 is 5,376 shaders. This will be the Titan replacement and will be really expensive so I would like to focus on the other two since they will likely be the replacements for the 2080 and 2080 Ti so I will refer to them as the 3080 and 3080 Ti and while that was interesting it didn't get exciting for me until we received some indication of performance recently Rogaine posted a time spy score that was found in 3d marks database where the score was private. That entry was for an NVIDIA card. However, the memory clock speed reported is inconsistent and the GPU core clock speed seems below expectations for Ampere at just 1,935 megahertz. That private time spy score came in at 18,257. That is about 30% better than a 2080 Ti and quite frankly is not impressive if this is a 2080 Ti replacement or rather the 3080 Ti. But what if it's not? What if the score is for a 3080? That would be impressive. How can we know? Let's consider both possibilities. If this score represents a 3080 Ti, and the 3080 Ti has more shaders at 5,248, and we know the 2080 Ti has 4,352 shaders, then that's a 20% increase right there. Then you have a very slight increase in core clocks, and thus the balance of it must be from the IPC increase in the new Ampere architecture. That, at least to me, would easily explain the 30% increase in the time spy score, but that would be extremely disappointing. I mean, how could this most anticipated generation provide such a modest increase? I seem to remember that going from a 1080 Ti to a 2080 Ti was a larger improvement in Time Spy, and that generational upgrade was one of the most disappointing this decade. Could this one really be worse? So I decided to go back and dig into my own benchmark numbers and then supplement that with researching the 3D Mark database for Time Spy scores. I went all the way back to Kepler, or rather Big Kepler, in the GTX 7 series, and I I decided to plot the time spy scores, the 760, 770, 780, and 780 Ti graphics cards, essentially covering the range so that we could see the trends. Then I plotted the Maxwell generation in the GTX 9 series of cards from the 960, 970, 980, and 980 Ti cards. If we just focus on the high-end 80 Ti cards, we can see that the Time Spy score for the 980 Ti was 68% greater than the 780 Ti. Moving on to the beloved Pascal generation in the 10 series, the 1080 Ti outpaced the 980 Ti in Time Spy by more than 70%. That 1080 Ti was the GPU of the decade. Finally, in Turing for the RTX 20 series and its refresh in the Super Series, you can see that the Super Series with the additional shaders just falls right in line. Comparing to the high end, the 2080 Ti was just a 46% improvement over the 1080 Ti. The Turing generation was considered a great disappointment, not only with lower generational performance upgrade, but also with the price increase. A 30% improvement from a 2080 Ti to a 3080 Ti would be the lowest generational improvement in the Time Spy era.
Going back to the charts, let's look at the generational improvement of the 80 series cards. In going from the GTX 780 to the GTX 980 card, we see a 60% improvement in Time Spy. Comparing the 980 to the 1080, we have a 65% improvement. Going from the 1080 to the 2080, and well, it's the same story for Turing. It was a disappointing 48%. So if that Time Spy score over 18,000 is for a 3080, then the generational improvement over the 2080 will be just over 60%, just like it used to be. That 30% improvement from Turing to Ampere is not consistent with improvements we are hearing about from Ampere introduced at GTC. I don't think NVIDIA would have moved the 3080 to a bigger GA102 die just to get a 30% performance improvement. I mean, what have been the performance improvement before when it was rumored to be on a GA103 die? With Big Navi coming and NVIDIA's reputation and leadership and GPUs under attack, I can't believe 30% would be the mark NVIDIA would set for AMD to beat. With that time spy score as a 3080, the percent improvement would return to what we have seen in previous generations and confirm the rumors that this generational upgrade in Ampere was going to resemble Pascal. For me, I see the score representative of a 3080, and that is exciting for us enthusiasts. For a 3080 to score just above 18,000, what does that mean for a 3080 Ti since the 3080 Ti has 20% more shaders? I don't think that can directly translate into 20% more performance since thermals will become the limiting factor, which is why we have been hearing of 350 watt plus TDP and large GPU coolers as of late. However, I do think those 20% more shaders will lead to at least another 10% improvement, in which case the 3080 Ti will break 20,000. That's just amazing to think about. In a few short months, you'll be able to get a 3080 Ti that will break 20,000 in Time Spy. What does that mean for Big Navi? If you were to look where first gen Navi is on a chart with the RX 5500 XT through the RX 5700 XT, you see that it peaks around 9000 in Time Spy. So AMD will have to more than double the performance of where it is today. Is that even possible? Will they be able to more than double the performance with Big Navi? Something to think about. If you just scale up RDNA 1 to 80 compute units, of which you really couldn't as I covered in my first video due to the thermals, and then follow that line out to 5120 shaders or 80 compute units, it falls short of 18,000. So what does RDNA 2 and Big Navi have to do to break through 20,000 to beat the 3080 Ti? We'll cover that next time. Like it if you learned something, share it, subscribe for more. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe out there and I will see you in the next one.